Welcome everybody to Arizona Real Estate News. I'm Rick McCall with EXP Realty with Pat McMasters with Price Mortgage, Ruby Graff, Century 21 Arizona Foothills and Jacqueline Smith, Arizona Foothills, Century 21. Welcome everybody. Let me get us back in one big group here. Figure what out a starting lineup. Up. I know. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? It's a we need one more for, yeah, we need our, yeah. So we missed, <laughs> we missed last week um, as we record these things because one of the guys in the studio is just an adult. <laughs> he didn't hit the record button. So he's. You fired him, right? He, he, well, he's, I'm, he's in the union. So I had to, I had to do a verbal and then, uh, and then write him up after that. So it's kind of. You know the drill. So, but man, we had a, um, I got to show you the seven day moving average. And I'm going to quickly run through some Cromford data. And then Pat, if you can kind of bring us up to speed on rates, which I see they're going kind of flat this week, but this one's, this one's interesting, you know, with the blue surface area, the number of listings that have come on board the past seven days. And then you can see the downward trajectory of homes under contract and you can see how it just fell off right there. Any guesses as to why? Is this a test? Eh, yes. <laughs> Juneteenth. Yesterday was oh. a holiday. Yeah, Monday. Monday was a holiday. So it'll go down a little bit again. So when you start looking, especially YouTubers, they're going to start saying that contracts just fell off the map and, and this is it. It's a disaster. The end is near. And it kind of looks like the same dip that you see around uh, Memorial Day. You know, as you get up there and you take a look at these other dips in the holidays, see that? Mm -hmm. So there's, this is uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. And here's our dip for Juneteenth. And this was the first year for Juneteenth. So we'll see what happens. Um, but when we look at the Cromford Market Index, it's, it's, you know, it's falling. It's falling fast. We're down at 220. I went back and I kind of looked at week 13 here for a reason. And you can see that it was at 459. We hit a peak at 514 last year. And then it just started coming down. And now it's coming down to a pretty good clip. But the reason I'm looking at week 13, that's in March. And I go over to here on the listing success rate. And around the same time, week 13, you can start to see a little dip where the success rate's starting to come down, but it's barely noticeable. And then it, it's falling from a, a peak here of 92.3 down to 85.6. Those are listings that, you know, either the contract fell out or the people had to, you know, let them expire. They just, they just didn't get sold. But here's the average price. Week 13, we peaked. The Cromford market index was signaling that, uh, Things are getting more towards a balanced market. So that happens before we see a, a change in pricing. And now you can see it's the price per square foot. Now inside of this, as we were talking earlier, um, as luxury mark uh, housing starts to pull off for the summertime, this chart naturally goes down, see like last year. But it started going down a lot earlier. So we're definitely seeing the asking price coming down at a pretty good clip. In fact, we have about 4,000 price reductions in the past seven days, and we were rolling about 1,200. Yeah. Cromford Market Index, when I look at Buckeye, Buckeye is almost at 100 right here. And what it stands out to me is they have 476 listings, but now 122 of those are new construction. They're spec homes. So 25% of the listings that are out there now are new construction. And I'm seeing the same thing in Maricopa and in Queen Creek. And that is adding to supply, which is pulling the Cromford market index down. The other thing, and this is this is big, and, and we got going on this pretty good this weekend. Ever since Jackie said, you know, Rick, there's 6,400 vacant homes out there. Hmm. We have 12,556 active homes on the market. Of which, get this, 6,560 are vacant, which means they're either a, a flip, like with high buyers like Open Door and Offer Pad, or they're owned by investors and they're they're selling them off. Mm -hmm. 
and um and what would be the other one that just um those are the two main airbnb you know, oh, new, airbnb and new construction mm -hmm. those are rolled into that 6560 then we looked at tenant occupied that are for sale who's selling those landlords 774 and then interim which is either a mix of snowbirds or airbnbs is 346 brings us to a total of almost 8,000 homes, mm -hmm. which means we only have 4,800 homes out there that are owned by owner occupant that are for sale. Yep. Of course. That number's not growing. Mm -hmm. And will it grow? I and doubt it. I have, I'm going to read a quick email here that I think explains the whole situation. And then Pat, I want to roll into roll into rates. And this came from one of our subscribers. And she says she wanted to say, I thought I'd throw my two cents in because it's wild to me that more people aren't ringing the alarm bells on affordability. She goes, we make a great deal more than the median household income in Maricopa County. We tried to purchase a home November 21 for 450000 with 10% down at 3.25%. Sadly, came in second to a buyer who was willing to waive the appraisal. Our payment would have been 2020 a month. Fast forward to today, if we were to try and buy that same house now, the appreciation in price coupled with the 6.25% rates mean we'd have a payment of 3182 Not to mention, we'd need an extra $7,000 in down payment funds. So in seven months, our hypothetical mortgage payment went up by 57%. Crazy. And their income didn't. So mm -hmm. that's what's making it difficult now for people to, that's why they're sitting on their hands. They, they had the opportunity. The math was right. The interest rates were really low. The prices were going up. Everybody outbid them. And now when they're finally getting a chance to get out there and not get outbid, the price is still mm -hmm. higher, but the rates making it out of reach. So Pat, my friend, is there any hope in the near future with this? No. Okay. <laughs> Next. Hey. <laughs> okay. Jackie, Ruby, anything else? Well, I guess it's a wrap. Yeah, that's a wrap. Um, no, basically. <laughs> yeah, you know. What kind of show is this, anyways? Thing. Yeah. No, we um, we got the treasury. I mean, rates have kind of now uh, stabilized. I mean, they. We got the the news last week. The, the what la, la, last week was just crazy. Wednesday, Thursday, after that, it was another movement up a hundred point move. Um, we saw it. We're seeing the top here, short term top. Uh, bottom line is, I think that as far as like the treasury is concerned, treasury yields, they're really in. They're pricing in high enough to virtually. They're pricing in virtually any other expected rate hikes over the next year. I really. I mean, they're. This that last week was a huge shock, and I think uh, moving forward, we're they're going to see we're going to see obviously another increase. But the good news is the cat the you know, the cat is out of the bag, and I think if we do have another three and a quarter point jump, if we have higher you know Fed hikes like we do, I think it's going to be positive for the bonds rates. And I think basically the only thing, the only way for really rates to go higher is for the date the data to really de de deteriorate further. And I think we will see some deterioration in the next couple months. I think the inflation is still, I really think the CPI is a fake number. That's just my, I think 8.6. Everybody's a consumer knows that it's not 8.6. You see food, you see gas. I really think, I mean, honestly, my, my instincts are, if they really wanted to let the cat out of the bag, inflation would be at 15% plus, you know, if it was really that number. So bottom line is, I think, the data has already been baked into the rates. Um, unless we see some up, obviously some surprises on feds. I think we're still are now out of the woods with rates. I, you know, we're right now looking at high fives, five and seven, eight, six. Um, I I'm sure there's other lenders there. Are probably Jackie and Ruby, you could probably test this. They're probably mid sixes, high sixes mm -hmm. in some cases. Um, I'm at five and seven, eights right now, basically for a 30 year, five, 10% down. So, That's great. but as you can see the, the chart, we're, you know, we've gone out, we've gone up just, this has been an astronomical move the last, 
several months. And uh, since March, you know, really March 3rd, March 8th, even the beginning of the year. So we got, I think we got a couple more months of pain. And then um, obviously we're in a, I, I'm just going to say, I think we're in a recession now. Um, and as we go forward, I think the beginning of the year rates, if we see high mid sixes, high sixes, we're, I think we're going to see the worst. The worst is going to be a couple more months away. And then we're, it's going to, I think we're going to tip towards the downside on rates. That's my, that's my take. That's going to be interesting. My, my prediction. So, so ladies, um, what's the doom and gloom like out there when you're out selling homes? What's the foot traffic like? What are you seeing? I, I'm going to let Ruby go first because I got a soapbox to get on today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're still putting um, properties in escrow and uh, under contract. Um, got a new listing coming up the first part of July. So um, sad part is the realtor couldn't, um, or the realtor, I'm sorry, the um, tenants aren't paying their rent. So he's going to be ready a little bit sooner than expected. So um, but we're still busy. I mean, I keep being a little bit surprised because the interest rates are higher, but it's really still not as bad as it could be. And we've seen it here in the past. So that's what it, I got. It is, it is interesting. And I think it, I think it all boils down, doesn't it? To that number that we just went that said, you know, um, inventory is still excruciatingly low, even though it is. there's no doubt about it, that sales have really dropped off. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, and we've gone up to 12,000 listings, but um, that's that's still really low. You know, are we normally hang, if you could even use the normal word anymore, that's 27,000 homes. And how long is that going to take us to get there? Well, we're adding a thousand homes a week to that list. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, so the Cromford market is saying there's going to be plenty of markets where we're going to be in a balanced area between buyers and sellers by July and the majority of them by, by the end of August, which is what we've all been hoping for for a long time. So, um, mm -hmm. but and I am hoping for that, Rick, but I still think that we're going to, I, I will go back to, I think we're going to have a crash in transactions. I'll say the word crash, a crash in transactions for numerous reasons, but I don't, see i just still don't see a crash as far as value and there's a couple reasons i think we're getting a surge right now with the investors the airbnb the second home people second home people the second home owners thinking they missed that peak getting on the market we still have a lot of buyer activity ruby had a contract that she did uh this last week 11 offers we got beat out we were five thousand over list price. What's really mm -hmm. nice is we're 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 not letting our clients do stupid things. We never did. We always believed in gaps versus waivers. I mean, we've always tried to bring reality mm -hmm. to our clients. But one of my biggest concerns too, and Rick, can I show this? Yeah, one absolutely. of my so I've been doing this thirty three years, and I have seen every market, and this is quite different. But back when the crash happened in 2006, seven, eight, I wondered because I had seen ups and downs in the market in my 33 years, I wondered why then it, it was so fast. And I think to me right now, I think the internet has a lot to do with it back then. Word spreads quicker, fear spreads quicker and mm -hmm. fear can do a lot. And so I'm I'm looking at all these YouTubers out there, and I showed you this one here today, Rick. So this is a property in uh, South Phoenix. It's on Carter. And he was talking about, I mean, look at the headline. The headline is, Wall Street landlords taking huge losses, forced liquidations coming. Now run, here in, run. yeah, run. So, but here in Phoenix, we just recently had two listings and we had multiple investor offers. They're still yeah. buying. I, I, and they're they're good, solid offers. They're not hitting us. They're good, solid offers. So I saw this and I thought, okay, well, his big thing on this is that they're gonna be they're being forced to start dropping rents. So I went into the MLS and I'm gonna share this one if you don't mind too. So this one, they ended up his whole story about this was that 
Uh, they started out at 2,800. They had to drop to 27, 26, 25, 22, 80, and it was still sitting on the market. And I was like, really? So I went to the MLS and I, I did comps on it. And here are the comps for it. And if you look at this, oops, sorry guys. If you look at this, if I could see, um, and go down through the comps, the average rent is 22, 22 23, 23, 23, 23. There was a couple 24s higher. Um, the majority of them, 22, 22, 21, 21, 2000, 23, 23. They were six hundred dollars overpriced to start and they didn't with. Didn't get it, mm -hmm. so obviously we're going no. to see liquidation. And it is it. This is it right here. So it is leased now. Once they got down to the realistic twenty-two eighty number that the market bears, and that number has not changed. These comps go back to March with the craziness. So uh, you know, I, I worry about the fear mongrels out there. I think that can have a huge effect on the market. I honestly do right. because people start, they keep hearing it. I had a client the other day. She, she's under contract right now. I actually got her a great deal. Uh, $20,000 off list price for a, a town, a condo in uh, Greyhawk in North Scottsdale. Fantastic deal. We hit them at the right time. And she called me and she's like, all of a sudden was in fear. And I'm like, you know, here's the thing. I think where we're heading because Ruby and I try to work very transparent. We will tell you, if we don't think you should buy a house, we're going to tell you don't buy a house. Mm -hmm. We're here to be agents for life, not to do a transaction. And so I said, look, the craziness has stopped. We're not going to have 20 to 30% increases across the valley anymore. We can't sustain that. It's not healthy. We don't want it. It's, it's just, you know, if that kept going, we're going to have a disaster on our hands. What mm -hmm. I think we're going to get back to is the normal three to five steady increase per year. And and so I don't see a crash. I just see normalcy coming. And well, I'm that's, that's the other thing Sorry. about that that uh, that example that you gave too. That's an example of a YouTuber that's that's showing a number to fit his narrative and comparing mm -hmm. it when he's only got one number as an example. Mm -hmm. And it's it's same as people listing their houses and shooting for the moon. This whoever got this decided that that well, rent's going crazy in Phoenix, so I can get so I can ask whatever I want, and they right. found out they couldn't. And this yep. guy's saying that that that's just going to be a liquidation sale, and yeah. here's the beginning of it, and it's nowhere near that. <clears throat> right, and it, know, it is infuriating. You know, yeah. and people are people are saying now, okay, the prices are dropping, but what they're not taking into consideration is that we were having appraisal waivers. We were having $50,000 appraisal gaps. Those appraisals yeah. weren't coming in. And it's so a realistic now we're, price. Right. Now we're just getting, I, I don't look at them as a value drop. I look like we're getting a little more realistic. And thank God yeah. it's time. Well, people will take one piece of information and try to expand it to their whole story. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's I had, a, I had a, a subscriber. I had a great week with the, uh, with the YouTubers reaching out to me. Um, I mean, just before the show, I got a call from a guy named John in California asking if I knew uh, any in local insurance agencies for his home in Chandler. And, uh, and then I got a call earlier in the week. Actually, we did a video call with a subscriber, and she wanted to know. Um, she's got a little fear of missing out here. She's looking at a lot of equity in her home. And she's sitting in this home, and she sees all this equity. She's like, if I wait, will that equity evaporate? And did I miss my opportunity? And she wanted my advice. And so I just asked a lot of questions. And the first question was, well, if you sold it, where would you go? She was, well, I'd, I'd, I'd buy another house. And, uh, but, uh, um, cause I have the equity, but, um, interest rates are up. So I'm not sure where I would go. Well, you're going to stay in the local area. Yeah. But it'd be nice to get something a little bit bigger. All right. Second question. How much is your payment now? She said it's one thousand dollars a month. Wow. I said, how much would it cost you to rent that home somewhere else? And she goes twenty three hundred a month. Yeah. I said, stay put. Right. Said, My advice is stay put. Will you see your equity come down? Probably. Yeah. 
-hmm. And even if it came down and you stay put, there's no way that you could find anything near that thousand dollars a month that you're paying mm -hmm. and right. you're paying yourself, you're paying down that note. So that equity mm -hmm. may, let's say it evaporates that, that all the crashers are right. And you should have sold at the peak. I said, if you sold, now you're going to be paying a landlord. You're not going to see any of that money back right now. You're paying down your loan. And if things went badly, they will come back eventually and you'll yeah. have a lower balance that you on the home. So I'm saying if you plan on staying in that area, stay put. And you know yeah. what? Concentrate on the payment right now, not the equity. Right. And that's right. awesome, Rick, that you did that because every single person's individual needs need to be taken in consideration when they're looking at buying or selling. It's not just across the board. One fits all. Well, right. if you got the equity, what would you do with it? I mean, and that's, mm -hmm. that's got to be tempting. If you're sitting in a house now, you're not going to put it in the stock market right now. You've got $300,000 in equity. And I said, that's not yours until you sell it. So then when you sell it, um, what are you going to do with it? Right. Because if you put it in savings, you're getting nothing. And the yeah. stock is scary. So right now. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a gamble. Um, um, look at all the people that bought Bitcoin. But, I, you know, I, I really wanted to stress to her, real estate could go down. There's no guarantees. It could go down, but I anything can your payment's happen. Not going to go up, right? That's right. that's the and kicker. you bought a payment, yeah, right. So, so did I get that's good what, advice, Pat? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I mean, Jackie, you're right. I mean, because and that's why you talked about last week the number of people that are in a, a their mortgage at two and a half, three percent. That's why we're kind of there's so many factors that are going into this. We've never seen anything like this. We've uh, no. Back in before the crash, we never had rates at two and a half, three percent where people were settled in. We we've got trillions of equity out there. Uh, this is totally we have got supply and demand that is you know off the charts because, I mean, based on Bear Habib, you've got. I mean, I wish I could show this one video clip for about 15, 20 minutes where he goes through and he talks about, you know, the, the baby boom. We're in a, a transitional change the last several years because of baby boomers back in the set. There's a one little gap about three, five years that is causing all these people like the 30, 35 year olds to buy a house. Like you said, the, you got low interest rates. Those millions of people are not really moving. I'm not moving. I've got plenty of equity in my house. I I'm, I'm just stuck in the same wing, you know, same position. So you got trillions of equity. Um, and that's shrunk the supply of homes. We don't, we're not seeing the velocity of homes that we used right. to see back years ago. Well, the other, not the other factor that we got in there too, though, Pat, is that we, because the Fed, you know, the interest rates were so low and money was so cheap that Wall Street came in and started buying up tons and tons yeah. of houses and they did it in mass. And they, like when Zillow decided to get out, they didn't sell those houses individually. They sold them in bulk lots, like 200 homes at yeah. a time to people that right. make them rentals. And so how many of those, are they going to take profit or are they going to hang on to those and hang on to the cash flow and then yet and those homes still won't be made available right well, now you, we're seeing signs that there is some liquidating and profit taking going on mm -hmm. and i hope we see more of that and it's, that it's wouldn't really be a negative thing it's, it's, healthy. it's like a stock. oh go ahead it's a it's a stock go, it's like a stock going from it's no different than a stock going from 10 to 50. it is not healthy for a stock to go straight from 10 to 50. it goes from 10 to 15 pulls back to 13 then it might go mm -hmm. up to 17 it builds a base i mean i mean i mean go, go back to that chart that you know if you can go back to the interest rate chart you know that you had i mean this right here this move right here uh, um you know this back where is my cursor now ah you turkey <laughs> there it is um, <laughs> there it is it's somewhere it's some uh, i mean this move right here is not healthy it's been it's been a you know, this where before where stocks were going up they were basing out that's more healthy this right here has been a crazy market it's not healthy and that's why we're going to probably see rates pull back so um every, well, you guys it's it's healthy to see this pullback high, rates hot rates going up supply increasing uh, it's a good thing I know we've been kind of saying that well so even the, what the oh, go people were, oh go ahead Jackie go ahead. no I was just gonna say. So, Pat, you're saying maybe next year we see rates go down. I think that we're only going to see this crazy amount of listings coming to the market for so long because so many people are going to sit on those interest rates. So we get to next year, let's say prices stabilize and we just, even if we get stagnant, 
even if we did go down five or ten percent that's not a crash but let's say we're muddling along and we've got people that are doubling up and going back to living together because they can't afford to buy a house right now all of a sudden rates come down and we've got low inventory because people don't want to let go of those three percent interest rates and now we have rates come back down to say four and a half five percent what do you think is going to happen mm -hmm. yeah people the are going to go buyers are going to come back and yeah. so go. we're yeah right back in the I same mean, situation again unless unless and michael Orr alluded to this this weekend that you know with you get a little bit of a stampede getting and uh and it says fear of the market going down can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so, you know, you get this mentality that it looks like we're going to crash and you get inundated with it. You feel this urge. Well, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I got to get rid of this asset. I got to grab my cash and I got to I got to hunker down. But I still think and I think the numbers are showing us that right now, um, you know, people that are owning their homes stand put. Mm -hmm. that's that's the majority of the homes that are being sold are rentals vacation and you go through and you look at the listings and if it says that it includes the furniture that's an airbnb yeah there, now but there's guys, always gonna they should probably liquidate yeah <laughs> fuel prices are too high everything's too high tourism's gonna suffer you yeah. are not going to be able to get what you used to get for your airbnb you might as well cash out you've made some good money you got good equity those are the ones you cash out yeah and there's some tough restrictions in other states happening right now with Airbnbs. But, yeah, get get yeah. all the getting's good. So those are the right. ones that yeah. I would say, you know, let's get that home on the market and get it out of here. For so, sure. Because that's a big payment if you don't have anybody leasing that thing. So right. Yep. And then so, so we're gonna continue to watch these numbers every week, and uh, we're on Thursdays at six o'clock. You have any questions? Email us, and I will show you this email here in just a moment. Email us at youraznews at gmail.com. We will get back to you. And if you haven't seen the payment calculator that I've come out with, uh, send us an email and ask for that, and it lets you run through scenarios that say, okay, if my, I have a house that's $500,000 and I put 20% down, what's my payment at the current interest rate? And then you can say, what's this look like if values go down 30%? What if rates go up? And you can play with that. I must have sent out 15 of those this weekend. So That's awesome. Uh, That's, That's cool. That's great. Send a bunch more. So anyway, everybody take on the day and have a great rest of the week. Right. Take care. Bye. Everybody.